When you first started radio, what were your career goals? I didn't have any career goals per se, I don't think. I mean, I just, you know, wanted to get to a cool market and have a cool show and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I started at one of the stations that I grew up listening to, which is WMMR in Philadelphia. So I felt really good where I was at right in the beginning. Uh, but there were all sorts of like little things that I wanted to do. I, I wanted to introduce KISS and do the, you wanted the best, you got the best, the hottest band in the world, KISS, and, you know, got to do that. And, you know, got to know a whole bunch of artists that, uh, that I really admired and loved growing up, you know, Frank Zappa and members of the Grateful Dead and, um, you know, Black Sabbath and all these other bands. So there there was no real career plan. Uh, In hindsight, I probably should have had one. I probably would have done better. But What was it that drew you to radio in the first place? It's all I ever wanted to do. I used to memorize the DJs on, you know, stations like WABC out of New York. Morning, love. It's Ron Lundy at 77. (laughs) WABC, and I've got a song for you. Uh, And then, you know, all the DJs, like on the FM rock stations, uh, Scott Muni at 1027 WNEW-FM, where rock lives. And, uh, you know, Joe Bonadonna at WMMR in Philadelphia. And, and, you know, growing up in New Jersey, we got all the New York stations, we got all the Philadelphia stations, we got all the, the Jersey stations. So there were just tons of great rock radio people uh, to listen to and learn from. So uh, it, it was a pretty cool place to be from. Now, what are the biggest differences for you now in doing a nationally syndicated show versus a local show? You know, I, I don't really approach them, I don't think, all that differently. Um, you, you just have to find things that everybody can relate to, but it, it's no different than, than doing one on a local show. You're just finding things that everybody can uh, maybe not agree on, but, but uh, things that everybody is aware of and if you're making jokes it's things that everyone will get so it's it's a slight deviation from dealing with a show that's on in one city but it's really not that that big it, it, it's really not that big of a difference you've got to be personal you've got to be topical uh, you got to be informative if you're going to be funny you got to be funny but uh you know all, all the basic premises all the basic tenets of what you need to do stay the same what about radio makes you still excited to be working in the industry there's two ways to answer that. One, that there, there's always new artists. To, there's always interesting people. And it's not just the artists. It's not just the lead singers. It's, it's the producers and the other radio people. You're always surrounded, uh, at least hopefully, uh, in, in theory, you're, you're always surrounded by interesting, smart, creative people that you can learn from and bounce things off of. And, and that's, you know, that's the whole secret to life. Uh, do you want to be surrounded by dumbasses who aren't doing anything interesting? Or do you want to be surrounded by, you know, smart, funny, interesting people who keep your brain going? And, and, you know, that's what makes you want to get up in the morning to go out and do stuff. You know, I think that's when people die when they get older because they, oh, I'm retiring. I'm not doing anything anymore. F*** that. That's insane. <laughs> you know, you, you should be doing stuff till the day you die. You know, I mean, I, I do photography and I do music and comic books and, you know, I'm working on the three different books right now. Uh, you know, there should always be something that makes you want to get up in the morning. And if it's the thing, the main thing that you get paid for, even better. That's what life in America is all about, you know. There's always a way to turn a buck doing what you like in this country. You know, that's the, that's the greatest thing about the United States. If, if there's something you like to do, you can figure out a way to make a living at it if you're, if you're, you know, smart and persistent enough. Now, what are the biggest changes that you've seen in radio during your career? What would you say are, like, some of the milestones you've seen? Well, certainly all the technical stuff. You know, it, it sounds totally stupid, but, you know, word one is computers. Mm-hmm. Um, because so many things now uh, can be automated and handled through a computer. You know, when I first started, there were one of the first jobs I did was tape the corners of the albums <laughs> so they didn't play in the bin of records behind the dock in the studio. Uh, and they were picking what songs to play off of the index cards, and then they would file them at the back of the index card file thing to let the jock after them know that the song just got played. And uh, now, you know, all this stuff is on computer screens and you can handle, you know, an entire station with the touch of a button if need be. Um, so that, that's probably the, the biggest change, I think. You know, and, and as for music and stuff, you can argue about, 
styles of music and all that. But listen, genres and styles come and go, uh, but people are always waiting to hear a good song, something they can relate to. Now, my last question for you is, if you could make any change to the industry today, what would you change? Well, two things. For the music end of the industry, I'd say get a time machine, go back 10 to 15 years, and set up a common sense way of people downloading songs because they didn't do that, and that's what set up the whole, you know, fact that most people get their music illegally now. And people would have paid for it, but the record industry dragged its feet so much that the machinations, the the, the machinery to download music built around the industry and outside of the industry. The industry should have built it itself, but they were so busy trying to stop downloads from ever happening that they... uh, they damn near committed suicide. On the broadcast side of it, you know, I just like to see ownership trust their staffs more because in some cases I think everybody is, you know, there's one person who tells a whole lot of people exactly how to do everything. And again, if you have, if you've hired bright, creative people who know how to do their job, why should you tell them every minute little thing that they need to do? Why not let them do their job so a little bit more creatively? That that would be my uh, humble sincere advice. I love it. You have been fantastic. Thank you so much for even taking the time to do this for me.